343 just revealed we're gonna get some news and information about the future of Halo Infinite very soon. The Halo TV show is cancelled and Jeff Steinzer, the voice of Halo, quits TikTok. So if you want to know everything, make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. I would say in surprise to no one, but there are some people out there who do enjoy this and it's the Halo TV show, but apparently Season 2 is the only season we'll be getting now for Halo the TV show as it was just revealed that Halo has been cancelled by Paramount Plus after two seasons. Oh no! Anyway! And the reason for that reaction, I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory for anyone who's actually watched the Halo TV show. It just didn't really capture what makes Halo so great. I know a lot of people will say like, well, they should have kept the helmet on. They should have been lore accurate. Just tell the story of Halo C. There's a million different ways you could have gone about doing this. But I think the biggest issue was is that they just didn't really capture the feeling of what it is to play Halo in a live action TV series. I'd say my friend Chris Raygun probably put it best. When talking about the Halo TV show, he said, I'm not even exaggerating when I say the Halo TV show is like watching an adaptation of Spider-Man where Uncle Ben doesn't die, Aunt May is a dog, Peter isn't smart enough to spell his own name, and he lives in Tucson, Arizona. Basically saying that like, yeah, you have all the characters in the show that you would expect to be there for Halo, but None of these characters act the way they would from the games. Master Chief isn't some cool, calm, collected one-liner badass who can keep a level head and make the right decision in every situation. In the TV show, in the TV show is just like an unbalanced guy trying to figure out who his family is and it's way too emotional for that type of character. Halsey is just a straight up villain within the show, which is, really isn't the case within the games. Like, yeah, she kind of rides that line a little bit. And honestly, I think the reason why McKee is even in the show at all, I think it's because because they wanted to cut down the CGI budget instead of having like a covenant alien as like the main villain to talk to, which would involve a lot of close up, really high detailed animation stuff, just hire an actress. And I'm a huge Halo fan. I mean, like look at my background, look at my wall over here. Like it's Halo. I've made an entire channel based on Halo and I couldn't even bring myself to finish the second season. Mainly because it seemed like every plot point that these planted in the beginning of the season all fell apart halfway through and you know how people were so upset about Master Chief just taking off his helmet within the first season. They're like, okay, fine, no armor then. And then bring it back, McKee, I'm like, I don't care what kind of space magic happened. Like, you saw the life leave her eyes in season one. She's dead just to bring her back just because, I don't know, she was a main character in season one. It just, uh, it just, so many things has rubbed me the wrong way when it came to the show. Seeing characters like Vanek and Riz, who had some great screen time that actually provided some characterization to a lot of these story plot points, to then just be killed off like halfway through the season. And you're like, well, everything I got invested in is now dead. And I don't give a crap about Soren's kid and, and the wife and that whole Soren story arc. Like, they've spent way too much time on that. Apparently, the final episode of season two is really good, but it's like you only have one good episode out of eight, especially with this news coming hot off the heels of the Fallout TV show being nominated for 16 Emmys. I saw 17 other reported. So like people will love the show and it will be critically acclaimed if you just make the show in the same style as the games like even this show didn't follow the lore 100 percent accurately right but the thing is that they captured the vibes they captured the feelings of what it is to play a fallout game within the show like when i was I, like i even though i've never like actually finished the fallout game to be honest you know you know being exposed myself here a little bit but you know i've put plenty of hours into fall fallout 3 and 4 and also skyrim a little bit as well for bethesda games from my time playing those games they're like yeah this feels like I'm watching Fallout in live action. It's fantastic. These characters are actually likable. Though it seems like it's not dead in the water yet when it comes to the Halo TV show as Jeff Keighley did tweet out saying that the producers plan to seek a new home for a potential third season of the Halo show. So it will not be on Paramount Plus, but maybe HBO or some other type of streaming platform like that. Maybe Netflix or something like that could work. But then again, you're still working with the same producers, the same group of people who have made season one and two. How could season three be any better? As one would say, the show 
Just ain't it, Chief. Talking about things that shouldn't be it, Chief. It's Jeff Steinser quitting TikTok. Now, you're probably like, why would I care about that? Well, Jeff Steinser, he's the vo god voice of Halo, right? The double kill, triple kill, overkill. Super nice guy. He's done a great job when it comes to interacting with the community as a whole. And then he was recently told, like, hey, you should make a TikTok account. And he tried it out. And basically he hopped on for a bit there to check it out. So like, hey, what's this all about kind of thing? He said, I just don't have room for this in my life. Not because he doesn't have the time for it, because it's just too much mental drama for him as he's gotten too much ridicule for his physical appearance on TikTok to where he goes like, you know what? I don't need this in my life. It's not worth it. I'm just gonna close my TikTok account and just keep it to people who actually want to enjoy what I do, which Totally makes sense, right? I think you mentioned he's like 70 something years old, 76 years old, something like that. You know, it's like, I don't need to be on the social media platform, but I don't need to take this physical ridicule anymore, you know? Which is like, so I think it speaks more on the fact of how cruel people can be online and how we lose that personality of who people are. Like we treat them more as like objects within our lives rather than actual people with thoughts, feelings, and emotions and stories to tell for themselves. This also, I think, kind of ties also into the greater story that we see all the time whenever like an update goes live that the community hates or developers do something with the game that people don't like. Like developers get shamed like crazy online, especially on Twitter, where like they receive death threats. That's like a common thing now. Like, oh, you nerfed my favorite gun in the game. So I'm going to come to your house and hurt you like what kind of psycho logic is that? And having this type of negative discourse with people that you generally want to know and hear more from completely discourages people. I mean, we also saw this recently, right, with a 343 developer coming out saying that like he's not a big fan of guns. It actually kind of makes him a little uncomfortable to work in games like would have guns like Call of Duty, Rainbow Six Siege, Battlefield and stuff like that. But he says he can work on Halo because it's a little more detached on it. So he doesn't feel as uncomfortable working in a first person shooter. But then the toxic side of the halo community took that ran with it ridiculed them to the point where they deleted the tweet and i'm pretty sure they're going to be pre saying pretty silent moving forward because they just don't have room for stuff like that in their lives much like how jeff steinzer doesn't have room for tiktok for people who are just going to make fun of his physical appearance every time he gets on there it's like even though it's definitely going to be a minority group of people who are going to do that it's the fact that it just kind of constantly keeps happening, keeps building up. You keep seeing it every single day. Even though it might be just one comment out of 100, you'll still see that comment every single time you post, making you feel less confident about yourself, hurting your feelings and things like that. Like it's not a good thing to do to people. Now you can still find Jeff Steiser, especially on Cameo. He's doing a great job over there helping out with the Halo community, just interacting with however people like, you know, he's done some fun stuff with the community, which I really enjoy, but it feels like it's a thing like, yeah, this is the reason why we can't have nice things is because like the general public will just be toxic because a minority group of people will just be super toxic and will be very loud about their toxicity. And that is the reason why so many people are quiet on Twitter is the reason why you see so many developer teams not very many of them interact with the community because they get treated like that when they're just trying to do something fun and nice for people but this is why we have community managers for video games nowadays now there has been a significant change when it comes to the development of halo infinite if you guys remember what i've talked about previously on the channel here that the operation that we had recently operation anvil was originally Spar titled spartan surplus and we didn't know the actual name change until the trailer went live like about a week before the uh, operation went live which makes you think that something changed within the back end of halo infinite where maybe microsoft wants to continue on the live service of halo infinite to be a sustained game while they wait for something else to come out because it's going to be a while until the next Halo game. So in a recent live stream, 343 went on here to kind of do a little community play date, but an interesting tidbit of information was shared at the end of the live stream. Let me show you what they were talking about. Uh, and of course, after this operation, there is more on the way. We will have an update as well as more operations in the future, and you will be able to hear more about that next week. We're going to be starting our comms and messaging around the next update so it's confirmed the live service if you want to call it that it's technically still a live service right now even though we're not getting seasons we're getting operations are going to continue this is going to probably be the case for probably a year moving forward now right because the fiscal year rollover for microsoft just happened at the end of june right so currently we're in fiscal year 25 for microsoft Meaning 343 must have found a way to negotiate enough funding to keep Halo Infinite going for at least another year. So I'm assuming we'll probably get the similar type of cadence, right? Of 
operations and store updates with some forge maps throughout the rest of Hidden Infinite until June of 2025. And around then is when we'll probably need to see like what does the future of Halo Infinite hold from there? But I think that's a crucial announcement, much bigger than I think it actually sounds. Though I don't expect to see an entire year long roadmap for Halo Infinite. It'll probably be very similar to when we had the Banished Operation reveal, right? With I think it was Content Update 32, where they revealed the Banished Honor update, the Tenrai event, and then what was called Spartan Surplus and now called Anvil. So we'll probably get a better idea of what the next two or three operations are going to be next week, which we'll definitely cover here on the channel. If you guys want to keep up to date, make sure you tap subscribe. And surprise, surprise, as things always are with Halo, that some of the content that might be coming into the future has already been leaked out. Showcased here over on Reddit, we have a Mirage edition here when it comes to a, a sensor sash, that's what you call it right there, a wreck salvage shoulder plate, another knee pad it looks like, and also a little side pouch as well. Looks actually kind of cool. Definitely would be interested in trying that out. Some more stuff here. You can see different types of helmets that just unreleased content. But you can see like if the art team has gone this far when it comes to the thumbnails of these, most likely that the geometry and stuff has already been made for it. And it really just kind of comes to really just putting the finishing touches on it to be something that can then be added into the game. We've got some classic shoulder pads right here coming in as well. Hopefully, right? This is all just like leaked stuff hopefully hey if you're a photos fan check this out right down here you might like some of that of course then the thing is like when i'm looking at all these armor sets like actually a lot of this armor looks really great like honestly like gosh i wish it was already in the game you know something that we could have had for quite some time obviously not the case but when i just look at this i can't help but feel like yeah a lot of this is probably going to go right into the shop right because most of the operations of what have just been one set of armor which guarantee i mean i'll give it to them that the armor set itself does look nice it's like it's actually really cool customization but then you have so much of other customization tied behind a paywall it just gets really demoralizing and something that you know you don't really want to take time to grind out for right it just gets really frustrating at that point when it comes to just knowing that all you have is like this little bit of customization when you know that like if this was a full-on battle pass all this armor set is all these armors that are put within the shop would definitely be in the battle pass to get you to spend that money right there as well but sadly we're just not at that point i don't think we ever will be i do think things definitely need to change when it comes to these operations because you can see that the community is certainly fatigued by how operations work even right now within halo infinite because when you look at the like the dislike ratio on the halo trailer right for anvil that majority of people are actually disliking this trailer than liking the trailer. Now I am using a plugin, which isn't 100% accurate, but let me, trust me when I say this though, guys, as someone who has this plugin and then I can see my actual ratio of likes and dislikes, it's pretty accurate. So 343 really needs to do something to help mix up the current cadence that we have with these operations because it feels rather stagnant. Again, like Century Defense was a great addition. I think that mode is really fun, even though it actually just got extended for another two weeks, which is awesome here. It's a really fun mode. If I was gonna play Halo, that's what I would play right now, you know? Uh, but also we like we need to see some more, I know, just something more exciting to get people to jump into play. It's like a brand new mode, something like that. Something to take advantage of what Forge really has to offer within this game that I feel like isn't really being utilized a whole lot because we see maps like this, right, with like Vestige, which is going to be a remake of um, what's this map, Relic from Halo 2, right, that we've come to know and love. But even then, like this remake really doesn't look that great. Like it looks like. A base, like a good basic level forge map, right? Where you, you look at it, you're like, hey, the person who forged that did a pretty good job, right? I'm not about to go share this with my boys and be like, guys, you gotta look at this map or anything like that. But it at least looks well put together, playable, and you know, captures the vibe of what uh Relic was back in Halo 2 and Halo 2 anniversary. But the thing is, it's like, it's it's yeah it's a great map i don't think like a single forge map is something to get people really excited if you had like a map pack almost when it comes to like a playlist or something like that for community maps something to get you know get people really excited to jump in and play i think that'd be something worth trying out or maybe like 343 did in the past right with halo 5 where they had like a halo 3 anniversary playlist within halo 5 they did a similar thing with combat evolved when they put that p pistol into the game why not do something similar like that with halo right like classic Halo 2 with 
classic Halo maps, classic Halo 3 maps. Well, we guys we kind of already got that a little bit, right? And people seem to love that, right? So why not do that for like Halo 2, Halo Combat Evolved even? Really just anything that's something more than just like a single forge map that's kind of meh and also an operation pass, which is just earning coins and one armor set that everyone's going to be rocking when they unlock it so it kind of loses the fun of earning that armor set what do you guys want to see in the future of operations for halo infinite you know, let me know in the comments down below if you made it this far into the video guys leave a green heart let me know who the real ones are in the chat down below thank you all for watching make sure to subscribe to keep yourself up to date with everything going on with gaming catch you on the next one peace out